Man, I love this episode of Heartstoppers, but I always seem to forget how good it is. Maybe it's because of the awkward date between Tao and L that makes me cringe every time. But there's so much more happening here. Heartfelt confessions, relationship shifts, and plenty of laughs. So let's break it all down. We'll get the date out of the way first and then dive into the other great moments. Let's do this. Date fail. Heartstopper never shies away from tough topics. And one of those is taking the leap of asking your best friend out. It's a huge deal. And that's exactly what Tao does. For someone like Tao, who fears change and values stability, asking Elle out is a monumental step. It's not just about romantic feelings. It's about risking one of the most important friendships in his life. But the date itself? Well, that's another story. From the very beginning, Tao tries too hard to impress Elle, and it's painfully obvious. He puts on this front that's really not him, like the -the over-the-top appearance and his exaggerated gestures. And that is so much popcorn. The whole thing comes off as forced, which drives a wedge between them. You can tell he's desperate to make it work, but the more he tries, the worse it gets. Elle isn't blameless here either. Even though she's like Tao for a while, when he finally returns her feelings, she's thrown off balance. Elle's always been subtle in her approach to her emotions, so Tao's intensity is too much for her. She pulls back, trying to manage the situation as best as she can. But then the real gut punch happens. When Elle's new friends show up at the party, she is visibly happy to see them. You can almost feel Tao's heart shrink. He's left wondering where he stands with Elle in her new world. They confront each other, and it's not just about the date anymore. Despite their promise to always put their friendship first, change is inevitable, and they end up breaking up. After the date disaster, Elle finds comfort in her new friends, who remind her that Tao was probably just nervous. It's a relatable scene because who hasn't had a date where nerves got the best of them? Tao, meanwhile, gets a pep talk from Charlie, who reassures him that he's a good person and that he's trying. It's a nice moment of friendship, showing that even in heartbreak, there's still support. While I don't enjoy watching the awkward date unfold, it is incredibly real. The pressure of a first date can make you forget how to be yourself, and Heartstopper captures this perfectly. New Couple Dynamics Tao and Elle aren't the only ones navigating relationship shifts. Tara and Darcy, the more established couple in the group, faces their own challenges in this episode. We see them sharing a playful moment as they walk into the school, but things take a turn when Tara drops the three big words. I love you because of how annoying you are. And Darcy's response? Well, she doesn't really have one, and it's as awkward as you'd expect. Tara tries to brush it off, pretending it was casual, but the hurt is evident. It's a rare moment of vulnerability for Tara, who has become so confident in her relationship. Darcy's reaction is telling too. She avoids Tara for the rest of the episode, even making excuses about why she can't attend the party. It's clear that this is going to be an ongoing issue for them, as it's not resolved in this episode. Then we have Isaac and James, two characters who are still finding their footing, not just with each other, but in the broader storyline. They start bonding over books in the library, which is very fitting for Isaac, as he's the bookworm of the group. James, on the other hand, takes a few more risks, whether it's creating a book display instead of studying or making the first move. He invites Isaac to the party in front of all of Isaac's friends and later asks him over for a drink. Isaac seems to enjoy James's company, but he's hesitant. It's a sweet, slow-burning subplot that adds a different layer to the episode's themes. Coming out. Or not. Poor Nick is struggling in this one. By the end of season one, it looked like he was ready to come out, for Charlie's sake. But as we move into season two... The narrative shifts to reflect a more complex reality. As for now, Nick has only come out to three people, and one of them hardly counts. Tara was a safe choice because she was already with Darcy, telling his mum was riskier, and Imogen was a bit of a fluke as she essentially guessed it. The one time Nick didn't plan it was with David, and it didn't go well, which is enhancing his fears. The uncertainty of how others might respond makes it harder for Nick to open up. This puts him in a difficult position as he's someone who values honesty, whether he's afraid of kissing Charlie in public or unsure how to approach their relationship, 
Nick is always true to his feelings, but now he feels like he's lying to everyone, including himself and Charlie. I promised. What do you mean? When we went to the beach, I told you I was going to come out. I've just been finding it so hard. Charlie tries to help Nick by reminding him that he doesn't owe anyone an explanation, a sentiment echoed by Coach Singh. None of the guys know about me, so... Um... We well, don't owe them that information, okay? Charlie even suggests leaving the coming out party for a while, providing Nick with a sense of relief, at least temporarily. It's a moment of understanding that highlights how coming out is deeply personal, and sometimes it's okay to take it one step at a time, even if they're only small steps. Missteps and growth. Charlie's arc in this episode is both endearing and frustrating. He's still putting Nick's needs above his own at the start, even lying about finishing his coursework. Charlie, still waiting on your coursework, I say. What about your history coursework? I haven't helped you with that at all. It's fine. It's done. just to make sure Nick is happy. It's a questionable decision that he gets away with, but it's driven by love, making it hard to fault him entirely. Charlie, however, does fail to grasp Nick's anxiety about coming out. He gives Nick pep talks, encouraging him to talk to the rugby lads, and even drags Nick around the party to make it happen. Charlie genuinely believes this is what Nick wants and needs, but he's blinded by his own ideas and dreams. It's only when he sees Nick's stress manifest physically that he realises that he needs to back off. This shift shows Charlie's growth, as he's learnt to be more empathetic to Nick's unique journey. One of Charlie's boldest moments in this episode is to tell Harry to... Nick doesn't want to talk to you, Harry. Piss off. I love this scene, but it feels like it comes out of nowhere. It took me a moment, but I think it's a response to Charlie's lingering guilt about not defending Nick against David in the last episode. But when he sees Nick in distress and being harassed by Harry, he's finally able to act, protecting Nick as he's always wanted to. When it all quietens down... Do you mind if I stay for a bit, just to make sure he's okay? Of course, darling. Not past your curfew, though. I don't want to get you in trouble with your parents. Nick's so lucky to have you, Charlie. We see a softer side of Charlie as he comforts a sick Nick. In one of the most intimate moments in the episode, and possibly the show so far, Charlie is finally able to be the supportive partner Nick needs. Confirming for Nick that there's no rush to come out, and that Nick has control over how it happens, unlike what happened to Charlie. Charlie offers to stay low-key in Paris, before they're able to spend the holidays as just them. This makes Nick very happy, but Charlie takes a bold step, confessing he wants the whole world to know that Nick is his boyfriend. Obviously, I want you to come out when and how you want to. And if that takes a long time, that's completely okay. Part of me just wants everyone to know you're my boyfriend. It's a major admission. Unfortunately, Nick is asleep, symbolising how some of their deepest desires remain unspoken for now. Laugh out loud moments. Amidst all the drama, Heartstopper still manages to deliver its trademark humour. Here are some standout moments from this episode. Nick's mates trying to make amends, but unintentionally make it harder. I know you and Charlie are really good mates. Um, what did you say that for? Charlie trying to make Nick feel better. It's annoying when people think we're, like, Best bros. <laughs> if I don't come out of school soon, we're probably going to get found out anyway. Because you keep wanting to kiss at school. Uh, I think you're also to blame for that. But getting caught. Boys, I need... A heartfelt moment with Coach Singh. When I was at uni, things were pretty bad. That was in women's rugby. Lots of lesbians in women's rugby, that's how I met my wife. I remember what it was like, telling all my friends. Some took it better than others. But a warning about kissing. And, uh, maybe keep the kissing outside of team practice. Boys and girls can't share rooms on the Paris trip. 
And we've been told to inform you that boys and girls cannot share rooms. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> yeah, we know. Heartbreaking, isn't it? This episode is a perfect blend of Heartstopper's signature elements. Real emotion, the ups and downs of relationships, and genuine laugh-out-loud moments. It's all about navigating the messy world of love and friendship, and it sets the stage for so much more to come going forward. If you enjoyed this breakdown, hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, thanks for watching, and let's see what other secrets we can uncover next time on Nerdy Investigations.